Hello and welcome to the third screencast in Anatomy and Physiology and this screencast is to do with the RCC which is what we call the Respiratory Control Centre which is very similar to the CCC and the VCC which we've looked at previously in previous lessons and essentially this um, defines how we control our breathing rate uh, during at rest as you see on the screen and what we also need to know is how our breathing rate changes during exercise and what sort of things in the body helps us change that so you might have seen some of these things before as we go along it's quite familiar now if you've done those other two systems essentially how this works is as we're sitting still and we're resting away or if we're sleeping at home um, in the evening obviously or in the day if you're having a cat nap essentially a few things happen first of all the thermoreceptors provide information to the patella oblongata or the RCC system and what they do is they detect a change in temperature within the blood vessels or the, the actual temperature of the blood added to this of course we have our proprioceptors which detect a change in movement within the muscle groups plus the chemoreceptors now the chemoreceptors are really important here because what they detect it actually kicks off the entire system and for you to actually breathe and the biggest detection that, that or the, the thing that's most important to detect is the increase in carbon dioxide pressure and when there is an increase in carbon dioxide pressure so carbon dioxide starts to build within the within the blood system what the body automatically thinks is oh I need oxygen because there's too much carbon dioxide in the body and that's the kickoff for you to actually breathe naturally and all that information is sent to the medulla oblongata and this is then sent to the RCC which is the respiratory control center and as soon as those three elements provide that information to the RCC what happens is the information is then sent to what we call the inspiratory center which is a, a section of the RCC and that then does two things sends information to our external intercontact intercostal sorry to contract so what that does is it lifts your rib cage up just to a small amount so we can inflate the lungs and get a little bit of oxygen into the system and the second thing it does as you well know from inspiration is that it then flattens your diaphragm so as your sternum rises and expands out your diaphragm then flattens and all of this is the process of how you breathe at rest so just when you're nice and relaxed this is what happens breathing out is actually a natural movement at rest we don't need to think about it um, so as soon as you breathe in and there's too much oxygen into your into your bloodstream your body will kick in automatically the expiration phase so we don't actually need to force it back uh, down in terms of those external uh, intercostals and your diaphragm so again just a, a key point with those chemoreceptors the the amount of carbon dioxide in your body is a massive kickoff for this to happen which is makes your breathing happen naturally now what the examiner needs to know is what happens during the exercise and what are the differences so again as we start to run or, or move around or, or do some sort of weight training thermoreceptors will detect the temperature of, of the blood so are the muscles warming the blood is the is the blood getting warmer proprioceptors will determine if any muscles are actually moving a little bit faster than usual so it might be if we go for our run the chemoreceptors will detect if there's too much carbon dioxide within the blood system and will also check the acidity of the blood system so if the pH levels are starting to rise and obviously if we're starting to use more muscles carbon dioxide will rise much quicker in terms of the pressure however there is an extra system that comes in place here uh, and they are baroreceptors or what we call stretch receptors and what they do is the baroreceptors uh, measures what's happening in the blood 
and inclined with the stretch receptor it measures what's happening with our lungs so they're just on the edges of our lungs and as we breathe in the stretch receptor will become activated so if we breathe in heavily because we're moving the stretch receptor becomes activated and it will send a message to the medulla oblongata that our lungs are stretched more than normal so that means we we're obviously exercising or we're moving quite quickly so what that does is that the medulla oblongata sends that information to the RCC and as before it activates the inspiratory center mechanism now in this case what that does is it activates the external intercostal so under the ribs and starts to lift our rib cage but because our baroreceptors and stretch receptors have, have told our brain that the lungs are expanded a little bit more, we now need to activate the sternocleidomastoid, the pectoralis minor and the scalanus to force our ribs upward and outward even further so we can really expand our lungs. Because of this extra rise very quickly using those muscle groups your diaphragm flattens faster so everything happens at a much more increased rate and what this does is it increases the depth of your breathing just by those extra muscles contracting and your diaphragm forcing down further but because our lungs uh, our rib cage is expanded further our lungs can expand further and so that's why you get the increased depth of breathing but it doesn't just stop there. The minute our baroreceptors and stretch receptors realize that the lungs have expanded further, it also activates a second center called the expiratory center. And because of that extra stretch in the lungs, our body realizes that we're going to need some extra muscle help to pull this back in and therefore get oxygen into our body and carbon dioxide out quicker and what that does is the internal intercostals will then be activated alongside the rectus abdominis and your obliques to force your rib cage down faster so we can get rid of carbon dioxide in our body and of course that means your diaphragm will then rise faster because your ribs are coming down faster and finally that creates an increased rate of breathing so it means this whole system works faster so breathe, moving your ribcage up, moving your ribcage down, diaphragm rising, diaphragm flattening that is all activated at a much much faster rate because we're exercising and then the whole process starts again if we continue to exercise until the point that the chemoreceptors and the proprioceptors and the thermoreceptors uh, send information to your brain that actually we've stopped exercising now and we're back to resting normal rate okay feel free to go over this again and again and again but the examiner will need to know what are the differences between breathing at rest and breathing during exercise so make good notes and bring this to the next lesson